empty, so I can leave this for that. Agriculture on the move. 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 Agriculture on the Good day, viewers, and welcome to the program, Agriculture on the Move. I am a Philip Sidney, your host. Today, we are discussing compost production. I'm sure you know what compost is all about. It has been around for many moons. Are you using compost? Maybe yes, maybe no. Without further ado, I would like to introduce the compost guru, I, I would say, Mr. Thaddeus Constantine, who is an agronomist and he's attached to the Research and Development Division in the Ministry of Agriculture, Food Production, Fisheries, Cooperatives, and Rural Development. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you. Before I delve into composting, uh, Mr. Constantine, tell us about you. Um, give us your educational background. Um, good day, sir, Lucia. Um, I am Thaddeus Constantine. I studied in Cuba. I started my education here in St. Lucia at Marshall Combine. Then I went off to St. Mary's College and then Sir Arthur Lewis Community College where I did accounting. I made a huge switch later on. I went to Cuba and I studied agronomy. In a time when Cuba was in a transition phase from a fully chemical-based agricultural um, production system to a more organic system. So I was lucky, very lucky. Okay. Um, after which I returned home. I taught for a while at St. Mary's College. And then I went back off to study. I studied agricultural diversification in the Dominican Republic, where I earned the master's degree. Um, my focus at that time was tissue culture and how to protect species in risk of extinction. Okay. Um, later on, I returned home. I taught for a few years. And then I moved off to Canada to get a little more experience. And now I've returned home to give everything that I have now back to the island. Very good. So you're well rounded. Yes. OK. Um, Thaddeus, you have been involved in compost production. I think you have gone island-wide assisting uh, the extension officers, assisting farmers into uh, the preparation of compost. Uh, Tell St. Lucia, what is compost? Compost is an organic fertilizer we prepare from organic material. Now, a lot of people will tell you compost has to be only from plant material. Mm -hmm. um, I'm here to say today that we can use any organic material in the composting process. So all waste, all organic waste mm -hmm. can be converted into a very high value of plant food and also provide the farmer with protection against pests. So material on the farmer's farm, what sort of material can the farmer use on his farm for compost? Okay, beautiful question. Our farmers are blessed with a lot of waste. Mm, it's a blessing. Mm -hmm. All plant waste can be used. All of the sources of manure mm -hmm. can also be used. Mm -hmm. The, also, the farmers can also use a lot of the green grass that they cut when they do their regular weeding. Mm -hmm. This is an excellent source of nitrogen mm -hmm. and should be used wisely. Um, there are a lot of rock additives that we can also put into a compost heap okay. to assist um, with the, the complement of nutrients that we need within a good compost. Mm -hmm. Also, a lot of the waste that enters our island from the sea can be used. So. Um, for farms, for example, in the Miku area where we have problems with seaweed, mm -hmm. that material can be used mm -hmm. in the composting process. I'll come back to that because that's very interesting. Um, why compost? Composting will assist the farmer in cutting his cost of production, principally. Um, I think this is one of the most important aspects in any composting program on a commercial scale okay. um, to cut the cost of production. Mm -hmm. because. Um, plant nutrients tend to be very expensive. Mm -hmm. It will also assist the farmer in managing pests. 
um, efficient management of pests on this island is becoming a very critical issue mm -hmm. for farmers. Um, compost tends to have a multitude of beneficial organisms which provide a certain level of protection on farms, allowing farmers to reduce the amount of agrochemicals that they have to use during their production, mm -hmm. um, thereby cutting the cost of production tremendously, not only looking at the um, use of the fertilizer mm -hmm. aspect of it, but also the plant protection part of it. Okay. Uh, so are you saying that household waste, bio, biodegradable waste from the household can also be used for composting? Yes. Um, it would be a very good idea for our backyard gar gardeners. We have a lot of backyard gardeners, okay. island-wide. It's an in initiative that the ministry is really, really pushing, pushing now. Pushing, yes. Mm -hmm. And I have been lucky enough to assist with some of the work that they do with the backyard gardening program. Okay. The backyard gardeners have the benefit of using all of the waste that comes out of the kitchens. Um, from our kitchens, we have a lot of fish waste. Mm -hmm. The fish um, bones tend to be very high in phosphorus, which is one of uh, the nutrients which tends to be deficient in our soils. Mm -hmm. um, it also tends to have high levels of calcium, which will protect our fruit. Um, all of the kitchen waste from that tends to be organic in nature mm -hmm. can be used. There are many methods that can be used to generate compost from that waste, not only heaping, because in some cases where we have a lot of animal waste mm -hmm. in the kitchen waste, mm -hmm. um, heaping would not be the best solution. Okay. You might want to use a 55 gallon drum, cover it, mm -hmm. put a briver tube on it, mm -hmm. and send that briver tube into a bottle of water mm -hmm. that will help provide some um, strategy, airlock strategy. Mm -hmm. The exudate from that compost will serve as an excellent liquid fertilizer. Within the first two months, we're going to have a very anaerobic, smelly exudate. That mm -hmm. is thrown away. Okay. After the first two months, the exudate is going to become brown and it will have a smell of a light molasses smell. Okay. This is a perfect organic additive for any farm, mm -hmm. household mm -hmm. or commercial. Okay. Um, this is, tends to be very cheap in humic acids, and these humic acids provide nutrients, but they also provide the farmer with a certain level of pest protection, mm -hmm. especially when we look at the issue with nematodes. All right. So if, for example, the, let us stick to the backyard for now before mm -hmm. we go into commercial. Um, a a 40-gallon drum, mm -hmm. plastic drum. Plastic drum. You're saying that the, that the, that uh, person can use to throw all their waste into it, and within three months you have a perfect uh, fertilizer. fertilizer. As I mean. Yes. And how can that be applied? Okay, the fertilizer can be applied in two methods. You could do it in a liquid form mm -hmm. or in a solid form. Mm -hmm. um, in solid form, you take the compost and you spread it around the plants, or you use it in the holes where you're going to put the plants. Mm -hmm. And you could use it also as a, a potting substrate mm -hmm. to start your seedlings mm -hmm. or to do your flowers. Mm -hmm. um, in the liquid form, the compost, when it is well cured, can be soaked anywhere from three hours to two days mm -hmm. um, and stood once in a while mm -hmm. to keep it anaerobic, to ensure it has oxygen. And that can be sprayed onto the plants. It could be sprayed onto the leaves and it can be sprayed onto the stem of the plant. Mm -hmm. In the case where we do a foliar application, where we apply it to the leaves, we recommend that the farm, that the householder use it at 10% because it tends to be very, very potent. Okay. Um, so one part liquid fertilizer to nine parts water. Okay. In the case where we're going to use it as a drench. Hold that thought. Uh, we are moving quickly. You're watching Agriculture on the Move. We add you for a break. Back soon. There are many opportunities in agriculture and broiler production is one such enterprise. For further information, contact the Veterinary and Livestock Division at 468-5621. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move. We're discussing compost management, compost production. Um, Mr. Constantine, you're talking about the liquid fertilizer. Uh, how is that done, how is it stored, and how is it, how is it applied, and what are the, the, um, the nutrient composition of that fertilizer? Okay. Um, the liquid fertilizer from the backyard 
especially when we use the drums method. Mm -hmm. After the two months, the exudate that I spoke about, mm -hmm. the humic acid, that can be stored for up to six months. Okay. You store it in a cool, dark cupboard, in a dark bottle. So like, for example, one of your old bleach bottles would be very good for, for that um, activity. Mm -hmm. um, it can be applied foliar, like I said earlier, and it can be applied in a drench at foliar at 10%. That liquid fertilizer tends to be very rich in nutrients. It would tend to have a very high quantity of nitrogen in a form that the plants could absorb immediately. Okay. It would tend to also be high in potassium, phosphorus, and all of the micronutrients that the plant would need. In many cases, we tend to overlook the micronutrients. And so when we buy a fertilizer from the store, we buy three nutrients or five. Mm -hmm. The plant needs 12 from us. Okay. And so the compost will ensure that we provide all of them. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing about the, the, the liquid fertilizer, when you apply the liquid fertilizer, it will tend to carry a certain level of hormones, plant hormones, mm -hmm. that will allow you to provide a certain level of protection to your plants, strengthening your plants, especially in case where you have a plant that is undergoing stress. Because in many cases, our plants undergo stress, just like humans. Mm -hmm. And we need to give them some kind of boost to take them out of that stress. Mm -hmm. And so these plant hormones and the vitamins that are contained within the compost and some of the probiotics, mm -hmm. they tend to relieve the stress of a flowering plant. For example, you have a tomato plant that is very heavily laden with tomato. And you want to alleviate some of the stress. Mm -hmm you can use a liquid fertilizer to do that. Okay. Another case, for example, you have a household plant that has been indoors for too long and it needs to come out yes. and get some sunshine, yes. but it also needs a little boost to ensure that it can make use of the nutrients that are available in the mm -hmm. substrate. Mm -hmm. So we give it a little foliar and then that will provide it with the hormones that it needs to ensure that it is strong enough to make use of the, the food Is, is there any in insecticidal properties in, in, in the, the, the liquid state of that, of that um, compost? Um, that's one of the greatest benefits for us here in the region, in the Caribbean. Um, we are blessed with a very beautiful microflora, um, a lot of microorganisms that control insects for us naturally. Mm -hmm. We tend not to see them a lot on our farms. Mm -hmm. Our farms, we've done a lot of damage. However, in our backyards, they tend to live very, very well. Yes. And so whoever makes liquid compost is automatically applying a repellent, to their, their plants, and also a preventative measure to, pre to manage insects that are there and to prevent the advent of new insect problems. Okay. In the case of nematodes, which is one of our principal problems in the soil, compost also assists tremendously in the management of nematodes. A study done by a St. Lucian chap in the University of the West Indies, he was able to identify 40 organisms oh. within liquid compost that manage nematodes. Okay. Okay, so there are lots of beautiful things in compost that we need to make use of. The farmer may not always know they're there, mm -hmm. but he will see the effect later on. The, the, the bulk uh, portion of the, uh, the compost, in terms of uh, the soil structure, uh, is there any improvement to the soil structure, the aeration of the soil, etc.? Yes, compost does assist with the soil structure. It does improve the soil structure, especially when we have a weakened or tired soil mm -hmm. or when we have very sandy soils. Mm -hmm. um, in many cases, our soils tend to have very high levels of clay, which tends to compact with the overuse. Mm -hmm. um, the application of compost will assist with the aeration of that soil, allowing the plants to make better use of their nutrients. Mm -hmm. It will also allow the farmer to reduce the amount of tillage so, for example, instead of having to plow with every crop, he may only need to plow once a year or once every three years, okay. um, which would save him tremendously. Okay, um, okay cost. let's go to, the, to, the, to the, the more commercial type. Mm -hmm. um, how would you advise a farmer to start off a compost um, production? Okay. Um, compost production, the first thing is the infrastructure. Um, not very expensive. Um, composting can be done from zero dollars to many, many, many dollars. Mm -hmm. um, it can be done in an open field. You clear an area, you mark it out, you measure out your area, you provide a little drainage, and you could start piling your compost. And then in some cases, you could prepare a composter house, and you could prepare composting bins. Um, the materials that the farmer would need, he would need to ensure that he has a good source of carbon. 
and that would tend to be stems, banana stems, dry grass, um, bulky material. Mm -hmm. He would also need a very good source of nitrogen. Mm -hmm. So green grass would serve as a very good source of nitrogen. Um, then he would also need a little manure to serve as an activator to assist and a little soil. I recommend that the soil come from an area that has not been farmed for too long. Mm -hmm. okay? um, then when that compost is being elaborated, he can use um, a number of materials to assist in speeding up the process. Um, for example, he could use blood or blood meal. Chicken blood will work. Mm -hmm. And that will assist with ensuring that the process doesn't take too long. Okay. Feathers are also a great additive to compost because it will ensure that we have very high levels of phosphorus. Mm -hmm. and phosphorus is one of the nutrients that becomes problematic in compost. Mm -hmm. Sea waste, all of the waste from, the, from our docks. Mm -hmm. We have our, we clean the fish and we let all of the fish guts go back into the sea, mm -hmm. causing pollution. Mm -hmm. These can be taken to the farms. They are a valuable source of nutrients that we shouldn't waste. Okay. And these are incorporated at about 10% into the heap, and it will ensure that the farmer is able to put in the required amounts of phosphorus and calcium into the heap. Okay. Now, that, com that commercial compost ideally should be tested, okay. ideally. Okay. And based on the test, then that compost can serve as a complete fertilizer where the farmer now or the agronomist who's doing the test mm -hmm. can recommend a certain amount of compost based on the nutrient values that are required by the plant and based on what is available in the soil. But can that be also the question of your soil pH before yes. you apply uh, that, that compost be necessary to be done to know exactly what you're dealing with? Yes, ideally you should know your pH of your soil. Mm -hmm. um, our soils tend to be a, l acidic. a little acidic. acidic. Mm -hmm. Um, compost does have a buffering effect, especially if you use feathers, mm -hmm. eggshells. These tend to provide a buffering effect, providing an, a little excess calcium to the soil. Okay. What the calcium does, it starts to displace some of the nutrients that are trapped in the soil. Mm -hmm. When the pH is too low, That's right. nutrients get trapped and the plants cannot use them. Yes, it's unavailable to the plants. It's unavailable. Mm -hmm. So what happens is that when we apply the compost, but in that case we would recommend that the compost has bones, feathers or eggshells, something that has a source of calcium in it. Mm -hmm. And what that will do, it will release these nutrients, mm -hmm. making them available in the soil solution that the plants can u make use of them. Also, when further nutrients are applied to the soil, the soil will be able to trap these nutrients properly and they would be available to the plants at the right pH. Mm -hmm. Because what compost does, it buffers the pH, yeah. ensuring that the soil pH stays at the optimum levels for plant growth. You mentioned bones. Yes. Um, at the end of the day, the bones are going to be degraded because I mean, you know bones can be very uh, septic if if you if it's you know, your hands get involved. Mm -hmm. So uh, will, will are the bones going to be disintegrated? Yes. Um, on on a commercial scale, mm -hmm. we would recommend that the bones be ground fine into a powder. Uh, that's that's before you you, you apply, apply to to the oh, compost. Okay. okay. Um, at the household level. Um, try to break them up down as much as possible. A mortar and pestle will work. Okay. And then you apply it to the compost. We try to ensure that because the bones tend to break down very slowly, just like good feathers. Mm -hmm. And so the, if the greater the surface area, the more we could break it down, the easier it is. So, so how long is that commercial um, um, breaking down of the material used for composting, how long does it take for use? Okay. On a commercial scale, the composting process could be as quick as 28 days and as long as six months. Okay. Depends on the practices. Okay. Um, for 28-day compost, you need an activator like yeast that will speed up the process. Okay. And then we would turn that compost okay. hold twice. That, hold that thought again. You are watching Agriculture on the Move. We are due for another break. When we come back, we'll talk about the seaweed, the problem we have in St. Lucia. It can be used for composting. Stay tuned. Back soon. Did you know that government provides duty-free incentives on farm machinery, inputs, irrigation systems, boat engines, boats, and many more? Investing in agriculture, a wise choice. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move. Um, Tadios, we 
looked around St. Lucia uh, for the past few months, and you know, there is this smell coming from the various um, sea coves. Mm -hmm. Um, Prale, for example, I mean, once you drive through, the stench is very, very high, and it's as a result of the rotting of um, uh, some seaweed that, that, that um, came ashore. Mm. Um, I was told that in some other islands, the, the seaweed can be used as compost. Can you elucidate on that? Yes, sir. Um, the seaweed that comes into our shores is one of the most beautiful resources that the sea provides us with. It's one for of the farmers. most beautiful. <laughs> for farmers, All for right. our farmers. Okay. Because it's a very rich source of nutrients. The seaweed itself is packed with nutrients, but that special seaweed that comes in is also packed with um, sea eggs, with fish eggs. Okay. And the fish eggs tend to be very high in protein, which is an excellent source of nitrogen. Mm -hmm. That seaweed can be collected from the seashore, try to avoid putting too much sand in there, mm -hmm collect it as fresh as possible, put it into sacks, take it to your farm, heap it up, and let it sit for two months. The rain will hit it, and the effect of the water is going to remove the salt. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing we want to get rid of. But within two months, you would have the perfect potting mix. It's a very quick composting process, very simple. The only labor that is incurred is, and cost that is incurred is collecting it and taking it to the farm and the sacks that you need. Mm -hmm. The research we did here um, at the research division, we were able to produce compost within two months okay. from the seaweed. Very high-valued compost that tends to give a certain level of protection to the plants, especially when we look at the, the problems we have with the nematodes. Mm. And so um, I would encourage every farmer in St. Lucia to collect that seaweed, put them in the flower bags that you buy from the bakeries, and just rest them on the farm. And when you need a fertilizer, please use the compost. If you have, have a built-in fertigation system, that seaweed, when you have composted it, you could soak it overnight in the morning, take the extract, place it into your fertigation system, and use it once a week or every three days to feed your plants, to ensure that your plants are well fed. Is, so what is the nutrients in there? Uh, do you have an idea of the composition of yes. the nutrients? Um, so the seaweed tends to be very high in nitrogen, mm -hmm. very, very high, up to 16% Whoa. in some cases. Okay. Um, it tends to have very high levels of calcium and phosphorus, along with magnesium. Mm -hmm. um, boron, boron is a problematic yes. nutrient. It tends to have, have very high levels of boron. Every micronutrient that is needed by the plant is available in the seaweed. Mm -hmm. One of the issues we are still trying to combat is understanding the relationship with phosphorus, mm -hmm. because for us, phosphorus is one of the nutrients that has pre proven a little problematic on the island. Okay. And it's so important. Why, why, why is that? Because it's, it's the main nutrient for, for root growth. Root growth, yes, okay. And if you want a strong plant, you want a good root system. Mm -hmm. Also, um, it assists with a lot of the movement of energy within the plant. And so if we don't have enough phosphorus, then we have problems not only in the roots, but also above the ground. Mm -hmm. so, 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 you, so you're saying that the seaweed also have nematicidal properties, properties and you can encourage banana farmers to use it on their farms, right? Yes. I think um, I would never ask a farmer to move away completely from their chemicals because mm -hmm. that's what they know mm -hmm. and you need to make a living. But um, I think farmers should include that seaweed compost, especially the banana farmers, mm -hmm. to assist them with that nematode problem that they're having. And also, foliar applications of that seaweed will also assist with strengthening the plants to allow the plants to have a little more vigor in the field. Mm -hmm. It will assist tremendously with disease management in our banana farms. So the question of people are saying, okay, that the seaweed is a problem for St. Lucia, it is not a real problem. In other no. words, it, it's, it's like godsend. It is. It is a godsend. So if I wasn't working in the Ministry of Agriculture, I would open a seaweed composting business. 
and then <laughs> sell sell and sell, sell sell compost definitely uh, sell it all over the world because worldwide there's a demand for seaweed compost because I, I think it's happening in Barbados uh, uh, I think there's somebody who's act actually um, doing the composting and uh, actually selling that selling. The composting. and also Taiwan Taiwan is doing it too yes. well I, I, I think they're doing it also yes Taiwan okay. they've also done research into it okay um, what are the disadvantages of composting Okay, one of the biggest disadvantages of composting is in the case that the process is not done properly, mm -hmm. contamination, biosafety, contamination from fecal coliforms. Okay. Uh, many cases, the farmer will not in wait for the composting process to be completed. Mm -hmm. The composting process will kill all coliforms and all of the microorganisms that tend to cause problems within our food chain. Mm -hmm. But poor composting methods will ensure that these organisms get into the food chain. So mm -hmm. though it may sound like a save all solution, mm -hmm. we have to be very cautious when we do in our compost. So in other words, allow the anaerobic bacteria to do its work? To do its work, yes. And then it will take care of all, all of it. What, what are, in, are there any other dis disadvantages as far as maybe bulk is concerned? Yes, um, cost of production. It tends to be a little costly um, starting off a composting program, a commercial composting program. Mm -hmm. Um, th tends to be very bulky and so machinery tend to be necessary like for example bobcat tractors, mm -hmm. a little a mini excavator, something like that will mm -hmm. assist tremendously if the farmer really wants to take this to a commercial um, level. Mm -hmm. Another problem is the application. Mm -hmm. um, I said earlier that the farmers can take the liquid extract and put it into the fertigation systems. Mm -hmm. A lot of our farmers are not do not have fertigation systems. Right, right. And so they still have to put it in the knapsack spray and go mm. apply it. Mm -hmm. It's also very bulky, mm -hmm. very heavy. Mm -hmm. And so you would have to be carrying sacks of compost mm -hmm. into the field mm -hmm. to do the applications. Mm -hmm. um, so um, in that respect, it tends to be a little difficult to use. Okay, I have an acre I've cleared, I have plowed. Uh, can you tell me uh, how many tons of compost that I would require for an acre? All right, well, I cannot do this sitting here presently. I know. <laughs> <laughs> because I would have to do all of the calculations. Mm -hmm. um, what we would ideally have to do is to determine the nutrients in your soil and the nutrients in the compost and calculate it. Okay. Um, so, so you'll carry a soil test? You would have to carry out a soil test mm -hmm. and carry out a test on the compost. Okay. And based on the nutrients required by your crop mm -hmm. and what's available in the soil, then I would do uh, a recommendation. So it would be a little um, irresponsible of me to, tell, to yes, say yes, at this, in this yeah, forum yes. that we could use 10 bags to an acre, for example. Do, but do we have the facility here, the lab, that can actually do that to give you, you know, um, the nutrients that are available, see from the soil level and also from the compost level so that you can determine exactly what is required for use? Yes, I think at research, we do have a cadre of scientists that are able to do um, very good soil tests. Okay. And we also have a, a cadre of people that are able to do all of the calculations. Okay. So um, collaborating with the research and development department, mm -hmm we would be able to do that kind of work and okay. um, ensure that the farmers apply the right amounts of compost for the requirements. As we're about to end, uh, I know you've been doing some work with um, some farmers down in, in Region 6. Can you give us a little synopsis of this? Um, as part of the move by the Global Environmental Fund, Jeff, um, we've been trying to assist um, some of the farmers in the Fossa Jack area. Um, to learn organic practices. And so we've been holding a farmer field school where we have set up six demonstration plots. Well, one is set up mm -hmm. and we're in the process of setting up six demonstration plots okay. where we use only organic methods. And these farmers have been taught methods to reduce their cost of production mainly, mm -hmm. but also to make use of all of the waste that is on their farms. Okay. We're also looking at how these farmers could make use of some of the organisms like the earthworms okay. that we have on our island uh -huh. that are beneficial and that can be used. Later on, we could teach them how to use California redworms too. Mm -hmm. But San Lucian redworms are good enough. Okay. I'll, I'll end, mm -hmm. I will have to end with you here because I know there's a lot and you're very um, you know, passionate about what you do. So I'd like to thank you for thank coming you. on to the program. And I hope St. Lucian's farmers, um, backyard gardeners, here is an opportunity to get into your composting of your biodegradable waste at your house and have a, you know, 
very good uh, production at home. And of course, the farmers themselves will have that will increase your production. Thank you for viewing and see you again next week. I am Philip Sidney saying goodbye and see you again. Agriculture on the move. 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 Agriculture on the move.